there two-stroke turbo channel fans welcome back to the shop welcome back to fixing cars and petting dogs that's what we do here on the two-stroke turbo channel you guys are all two-stroke turbo super fans so you know that the deal Stella is resting as she does most days in a abandoned Honda Accord that's been t-boned it's just part of the shop lore I guess and I haven't fixed the car because she loves it as a doghouse and eh, why not let's let her have it that's how she gets in and out and let's go in the shop I'll show you something we're gonna have a little tech session follow me okay let's talk shop let's talk some business you guys know that I love two-stroke cars and one of my favorite flavors of the two-stroke cars is the two-stroke Subaru 360 vans that were only imported to the United States between 1969 and 1970. Only two years. And only 2,000 of these vans ever made it. I have two of them here. Both of these are restored. They've been restored for many, many years. I got this one in 1996, and I restored it. Uh, I drove it for a while without paint, painted it in 2006. So... That's going on, what, 18 years, something like that now. This one I got a little later. I painted it in 2009, I believe. Got it going. And I don't drive either one of them every day. This one more than that one. But I restore them for customers as well. So let me, let's get into that. And I want to show you a tip, tip and trick. So back in the day, I used to get these vans for free. People would call me and say, you're the expert. Come get this out of my yard. Come get it out of my briar patch, my farm, whatever. Most of these vans I got for free. You can't get them for free anymore. Uh, that's just kind of a side note. This customer brought me his van from uh, Berkeley, California, which is in the Bay Area. He's owned it for a long time, but it sat near the salt air and it really rusted, but he loved the thing. It was, it was a bit bittersweet. He called me up, said, I got a van that I'd like you to restore. And I was like, sure, let's do it. Um, but I had no idea how bad it was. The engine was broken. The engine was in pieces in the van, taken apart by some other mechanic that he hired. And all the pieces were strewn about and half of them were lost. That's a bad sign. Then the van's super rusty. Everything was bad. Like when I did get the engine kind of to the point where I could examine it, the main shaft and the transmission was broke, the crankshaft was seized. That was the theme of the van. The gas tank had a hole as big as my hand. It was rusted through. So it's been meant, this van has been here many years. It's probably the most extensive restoration that I've done. I haven't been on it every day, but every now and then, I do get to it and I want to get the van back to the guy, but it's not, I, I feel like he misrepresented how good a shape it was in. I was not expecting a full restoration at the time he brought it in. So he just thought I could tune it up or I don't know. Anyhow, we are on the brakes. Let's go through a few things. We're looking here uh, in the footwell area of a 1969 Subaru 360 van. Uh, I'm not going to talk about the wheel cylinders. They're special, of course, uh, front and rear, or the brake lines, or the e-brake cables. All those are special to the van. There's no other car that you can uh, cross over and use parts from. Same thing with the master cylinders. We're going to talk about that today. This is the factory master cylinder housing out of a Subaru 360 van. It's actually very well designed. Uh, I would say that it's an engineering marvel. The way this master cylinder fits down in here in the frame rail and is bolted to the frame and the way it all is just fits is super compact. It's kind of amazing. So let me get the replacement master cylinder um, because this one is not usable and I want to show you what we're going to do. Okay, we are all set up. We're going to have a little tech session here on Subaru 360 van master cylinders. As I was saying earlier, this is the original master cylinder housing. If I can focus in on that, you can see it's made by Nabco and it has the Subaru wing identification there. 
If you look closely, you can see that the mounting tabs are 90 degrees to the bore and it bolts right in to the side of the frame. These bolts right here bolt to those bolt holes. It's pretty simple the way it bolts in. It's also very unique. As it sits in the chamber, in the frame, you can see that the master cylinder is tilted down. So the supply hose can go underneath the floor. This is the removable floor and there's no interference. It's kind of nice. So this hose stays beneath the floor and that is crucial. Also, the pressure line, it's just a single circuit, also stays beneath the floor. Those are two key items if you're trying to replicate this. Because these are not available at all, new you can buy rebuild kits, but what happens is the bore wears out or gets pitted to the point uh, where you can't sleeve it or something. You just want a better one. Um, I have adapted and others have as well. A Willwood Universal Street Rod Master Cylinder. It's very similar but very different. If you see here the mounting flange is in line with the bore. It's not 90 degrees off and the bore is this particular one you can buy them in different sizes this one is 5 8 or 0.625 and i believe this is three quarter or 19 millimeter so we've got some differences in fittings and mounting actually quite a few and i'm going to go through those in case you want to tackle this job first of all you have to put or make a bracket i take uh, a one by one angle iron and I drill it, same holes like these, so that you can mount it to the side. That's one thing you have to do, is make a mounting bracket. The other is, you gotta cut the, the rod down. This is the piston rod that goes into and actuates the cylinder. The factory one is too long. It sticks out uh, an extra two inches. You gotta cut about an inch off. You can reuse this uh, clevis. Uh, arrangement. Here's your clevis pin and there's your clevis yoke. That yoke will go right on to the factory part of the pedal. That's important. So that part's taken care of. Then you have to adapt the brake line. You have to go from metric to 3 16 20 which is standard and you'll need to cut the brake line off and uh, redouble flare a new and with the new fitting on the line. You can just put this fitting on this line once you cut it off and reflare. There's that. And then you have to make a supply. And this supply uh, is made out of brass. I use the factory adapter that comes with the master cylinder. I tap that to 1 8 by 28 pipe, I think it is. It's uh, NPT, an NPT fitting, and these are easily uh, found at any auto parts store. So I'm basically recreating this plastic nipple with this brass. Once you have all that, which I know is kind of a lot, then you can take and put this down in the hole, and you have a modern master cylinder that you can get parts for, and it will bolt right up, and it will fit under the floorboard, and it actually works really well. Being the bore is a little smaller, you get uh, a more sensitive brakes, uh, which I like to improve the brakes on these as much as I can. You can see you can hook up your supply line and then your pressure line with your new um, 3 8 by 20 uh, uh, nut on there, um, and you're ready to go. This does take some time. It takes me about three hours to prep a master cylinder. I've done... Oh, probably a dozen of these now in the sedans and the vans so good that is what you need to do to get your Subaru 360 running we are working as a club to have these available in new or rebuilt but in the last 40 years that I've been working on these things this is the last piece of the puzzle that is not available so I hope I can help you 
get your van going or your sedan. Your sedan is very similar to this or truck. Um, so there we go. That is the tech session for today. If you have any questions, post them down in the comments. These are great little cars. They're getting rare and they're becoming more collectible, more expensive, I guess. This one is really rough, but the guy's got some sentimental attachment to it, which I understand we're going to get it going. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next video. I hope I didn't overwhelm you with Subaru Techno, Subaru 360 technological information. Have a great day.